Everything explained in this video is summarized from the coin market cap. And also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for future XRP news and some other cryptocurrency news in general. Now, take a look at this. Ripple lawsuit referred to magistrate judge for settlement. After the court approved in part and refused in part, the defendant's motion for summary judgment in the Zakhanov versus Ripple complaint, a judge from the United States District Court for the District of Columbia referred the Ripple case to a magistrate judge to settle. In addition, the judge disregarded the decision of the Southern District of New York Court that XRP programmatic sales are not securities, which sparked a heated dispute within the XRP community. Ripple class action case moved for settlement district court for the Northern District of California's judge, Phyllis Hamilton, issued an order in the class action case against defendants Ripple. XRPI and CEO Brad Garlinghouse the request for summary judgment that the defendant submitted regarding the federal and state class claims was granted by the judge. Tune and Gabe has reported that the defendants have been denied summary judgment on the individual claim that plaintiff Stostic has brought against them under California law. As an additional point of interest, the move that Ripple submitted to exclude the testimony of Stephen P. Feinstein was rejected as moot and the motion that the plaintiff submitted to exclude the testimony of S.P. Kotari and M. Laurentius was also rejected as moot. Judge Phyllis Hamilton issued an additional order that requested that the Ripple matter be sent to Magistrate Judge Robert Elman to resolve the dispute between the parties. Judge Hamilton disagreed with the summary ruling that Judge Torres of the Southern District of New York issued on XRP programmatic sales. He stated that investors did and did, did rely on Ripple's efforts for profits. As a result of Judge Hamilton's decision to sideline Judge Torres, the XRP Army has begun to speculate about the influence that this decision will have on the case between Ripple and the SEC, which has stoked concerns regarding the status of XRP as not being a security. Mark Vagel, a former attorney for the Securities and Exchange Commission, stated that the most significant risk for Ripple is the possibility that the SEC would appeal Judge Torres' summary ruling on XRP by utilizing this California case in the Second Circuit. However, to address the question of fraud, the court must first determine whether or not the sales of XRP were securities in favor of XRP. It was also mentioned by Bill Morgan and Fagel that the lawsuit might not have wider reaching repercussions, even if Ripple is found to violate the law. The battle between Ripple and the SEC has just become more intense. A recent event that occurred was that the United States District Court for the Northern District of California dismissed several main allegations that were included in a class action complaint that was filed against Ripple. This resulted in a procedural victory for the company. Ripple's request for summary judgment on federal class claims for unregistered and state law securities claims was granted by Judge Phyllis Hamilton, which resulted in the majority of class action accusations against Ripple in the United States being dismissed. In response to the termination, Ripple's chief legal officer, Stuart Alderodi declared his contentment with the decision. The status of XRP's security will be decided by the jury. The question of whether or not XRP is a security was not addressed by the court, despite the dismissals. An important decision about this matter will be made by a jury, which will decide whether or not XRP satisfies the requirements of the Howey test. Additionally, a judge in California has decided that Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse will be brought to trial in a civil securities action. The lawsuit alleges that Garlinghouse made representations that were false in 2017 regarding the sales of XRP. In contrast to Ripple's partial success in New York, the United States District Court for the Northern District of California ruled that the trial would concentrate on determining whether or not the acts of Garlinghouse influenced the decisions that investors made. This decision was made while the court dismissed four other claims. The purpose of this trial is to discover whether or not XRP ought to be regarded as a security according to the legal definitions, making decisions in a split. There is a disparity between the conclusion made by Judge Hamilton and the decision made by Judge Annalisa Torres in the Southern District of New York. Judge Torres decided that XRP did not qualify as a security when it was sold to retail investors because it did not satisfy all of the components of the Howey test. As a result of the modest damages and the possibility of a negative jury decision for Ripple, legal analyst Fred Rispoli pointed out that there is a possibility of a settlement being reached in the California case. Imminent deadlines and motions to consider, it was ordered that both parties reconsider their applications to seal portions of their briefs, and they were given until July 8, 2024, 
to make a move that was restricted to seal particular exhibit. After that, the court will make its ultimate ruling about these motions. Not only is there the possibility of a catastrophe, but there is also the possibility of a final magnificent win for the SEC in the Second Circuit. In July 2023, Judge Annalisa Torres issued a split verdict that brought about the debate. In that ruling, she determined that XRP tokens are not securities when they are sold to ordinary customers, but she deemed Ripple to be in violation when it was dealing with institutional investors. Due to this ruling, both parties have claimed a partial win, while at the same time, the boundaries of Bitcoin regulation have become more unclear. In May of 2024, a former staffer of the Securities and Exchange Commission named Christina Littman dropped a hint and suggested that the SEC might not pursue the issue any further. It is important to note that this approach is in contrast to other recent court rulings, including the ruling that Judge Ed Rakoff made in the Terraform Labs case, which rejected very similar arguments. During the time that Ripple is working to decrease the potential fines, which are estimated to reach $2 billion, Hogan is arguing that such severe penalties could compel Ripple to sell substantial amounts of XRP which could potentially be detrimental to investors. Who are the same group that the SEC was designed to protect? An attorney who supports XRP named Jeremy Hogan stated his doubts about the possibility of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission see winning a decisive victory in the ongoing legal struggle it is engaged in with Ripple in a post that he made on. Even if the SEC prevails in its appeal, the case, which is currently on its way to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit, may not end favorably for the SEC. SC will have a challenging time in the Ripple appeal in Hogan's opinion. The complexity of the case indicates that the, the Securities and Exchange Commission she may, see, may have a difficult time winning the appeal. Despite the possibility of a victory, it is quite probable that the case will be sent back to the trial court for more factual evaluations. This is an example of a scenario in which the SEC's initial triumph could result in continued legal processes that last for a longer period. Um, This scenario is the result of a decision made by Judge Annalisa Torres in a district court in July 2023. The judge decided the XRP tokens are not securities when they are offered to regular investors on exchanges. Ripple was found to have violated federal securities laws through its sales to institutional investors, according to the same verdict. The sexy's position is made more difficult by the fact that the judicial landscape displays a variety of interpretations. Christina Littman who had previously served as the division chief of the Securities and Exchange Commission, made a suggestion one month ago that the SEC might not take the Ripple case to a higher court, which might mean that Torres' decision would remain a district court opinion. The information that has been provided is not intended to be trading advice. There is no responsibility for any investments that are made based on the information that is provided on this page. Before making any decision about investments, We strongly advise conducting independent research and consulting with a knowledgeable professional 